Okay, thank you uh, very much for coming here. First, let's introduce our lecturer today, uh, Mr. Mohammed uh, Fela. Mr. Fela can, uh, was born in Algeria and uh, he received his uh, bachelor's degree and master's degree in physics in Constantine University, Algeria. And then he received another master's degree in mathematical science uh, in Un University of Captain, South Africa. And now he is a PhD student in the University of Waterloo and the Primate Institute. Uh, his research topic is uh, string theory. And uh, now let's give uh, uh, Mr. Fella a warm welcome for his presentation today. Uh, thank you so much for Yushan and uh, also for Zhuan. And uh, also this topic, it's not specific for one specialty. It's for the interest of everybody because we, I will discuss about the universe. So uh, one of, I will discuss uh, for one of the top uh, challenging puzzle in the history of uh, theoretical physics and called theory of everything. So um, my key word in this presentation, it's what the meaning of theory of everything, why everything. Does anybody know why I call the theory of everything? It's not me called Einstein called the why it's for everything. So uh, let's maybe just give you um, a quote which can, I mean, explain a little bit what a theory of everything is. It's the quote of Stephen Hawking. He said, if we find the answer, he means the unified theory, it would be uh, the ultimate triumph of human reason for we would know the mind of God. So uh, some people, um, I mean, uh, said that a theory of everything, it's called a God theory and, uh, or unified theory of everything. So uh, in this talk, I will specify why it's called unified theory of everything. So uh, first, I will discuss what's the fundamental forces in the universe and uh, Secondly, I will, um, I will go through the standard model and general theory of gravity. And what's the problem of unification? What's the theory of everything? And what's the strong possibilities of this theory of everything? And I will discuss with one of the most leader uh, candidates of theory of everything, which is string theory. After that, the prediction of the theory and the general conclusion. The first question which come in my mind when we discuss about theory of everything is, is there an, uh, is there an end uh, to physics? So we will answer that. Um, now in our universe, as we discussed, there is two scales. There is the microscopic scale and there is the macroscopic scale. So, and we have four fundamental forces. And what I mean by saying fundamental, that means if there is no uh, one of such forces, the universe will collapse totally. So the presence of these forces is interest, interesting for, um, I mean, the existence of the universe itself. So uh, these four forces, three at the level of small scales, which is electromagnetic, weak nuclear force, and strong, weakly, uh, strong nuclear force. And at the macroscopic level, there is just one force, which is gravitational physics, uh, gravitational interactions. So um, this table, it's called the standard model, and uh, it presents 
the three first uh, interaction at the small scales. So this is the particle represent, uh, I mean, those forces. First, just to show those here, those are quarks. And uh, just to give you what means quarks, if uh, you break down the, um, the atom and you go inside the atom, you found the nucleus and there is an electron uh, turn around. And inside the nucleus, there is a proton and neutrons. And after that, we have quarks, which is, we call it elementary particle. So we have this six family of quarks, which is compose the actual matter. And there is the other, uh, I mean, those uh, particles represent the forces. And for example, the first one is the gluon, represent the electromagnetic forces. This uh, also the photon, uh, uh, and those are the responsible for the weak and the strong nuclear forces. All this table called standard model. So to summarize for this thing, uh, the standard model is describe the three fundamental force at the small scale. Now, now we go to um, another I mean theory, which is uh, general theory of relativity, which has described the gravitational interactions at the small scales. So uh, this uh, theory was founded by Einstein in 1916, and it uh, works perfectly at the scale of the universe. But now we have a problem. This theory, its work in the large scale. This theory work in the small scale. This theory represents three interactions. This theory represents one interaction. So we don't need to unify those two theories. But there is two things which oblige us to, uh, I mean, combine those theories. First, it's the Big Bang. The second, is it's the singularity of black hole. Why? Because Big Bang or the black hole are small area in space time, so you need a standard model. And also there is a huge density, so you need general relativity. So in this case, you need to combine those two theory and you you, um, our target is to search for the unification of these four fundamental um, interactions in one theory called theory of everything. The theory of, of everything, that means it's the theory which unifies the four fundamental force in, uh, in um, the universe in one framework. The problem, as I said here, we cannot until now I mean, combine those theories without problems. And wh when we try to combine those theories, we find a mess. So until now, we cannot discuss exactly what the Big Bang is and what the black ho hole singularity is. So as I said, this is the theory of everything. It's the unification of general relativity and quantum mechanics and the relationship between the four fundamental force and it will be explains all the properties of the fundamental particles. Now, the strongest possibilities for theory of everything now are string theory, or called M theory, or loop quantum gravity. This is string theory, and this is loop quantum gravity. So this, by the way, live in 26 dimension, and after that, after some, I mean, uh, develop work, our universe is 11, has 11 dimensions. This is still live in the four dimension. So I am, as a string theorist, I am interested in about string theory. So uh, string theory, as you know, particles are pointless. I mean, if I said how to imagine an electron or proton or neutrons, 
we can imagine them as a pointless sphere. But the point of view of string theory, it's different. They said, imagine, that those particles are not the elementary particle. I mean the quarks which have seen in the table are not the elementary. That means I can divide the quarks to another small object called strings. So you can ask me, so uh, what's the particle in the world of string? I can tell you that if you have a violin and you play, um, I mean you play some um, song, so, so there is the vibration of these strings. The vibration of the strings represent here the particles or all the um, properties of the particle like mass, charge, spin. And we prove uh, since uh, last 20 years that those strings or this theory to be consistent mathematically, the string should live in 11 dimension. So three spatial dimension with six compactified dimensions and a time. So uh, this is how it's look like the string in six dimension with the three space and one time. So as I said, the five main theories uh, suggest an um, 11 dimension universe composed of three space dimension, one time, and six spatially called, I mean, uh, here it's called Calabio manifold or they compactify. So this is how it look like the strings in the, I mean, at the small scales. Now uh, I will finish by the Big Bang. So uh, I will discuss that th a string theory, I mean, uh, it's a unified theory of everything and the goal is to describe the Big Bang and the black hole. How did it describe the Big Bang? They said that there is a membrane and this is a three-dimensional surface and our world is on all the forces or three fundamental forces are tangent to this membrane and there is another universe and another universe and multi-universe so at some points, those membranes vibrate and at a sudden point, they collide. So there is that's this collide point, it's called the Big Bang. If you have any question after that, I can discuss these things. So uh, at the end, I will summarize by the benefits of a theory of everything. Simplification of concept allows deeper understanding better understanding of cosmology, black holes in the Big Bang, and better understanding of time and the space-time itself. So this is the references and also for pictures and questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for uh, this big picture of the universe. And I have a question that uh, for now what uh, uh, I mean, the in uh, how to do a prediction of about a string theory which can be verified or may be verified by experiments. Yeah. Uh, look, um, in the terms of as theoretical physics, there is what we call the physical phenomena. After that, the modeling of such phenomena using mathematics, and after that, predictions which should be falsifiable by an experiment. In the world of string theory, strings are in the Planck scale. That means at the time of Big Bang. So our technology now, um, it's, uh, there is no enough technology to verify the world of strings at, at this small scales because now at LHC or CERN at Geneva, we just be able to, uh, I mean verify the quark scale. But in terms of mathematics and in terms of solving problems, string theory solved a lot of problems and we have a consistent mathematics, so we are waiting for the technology maybe to, but we have a prediction, as I said, for the Big Bang, we have a prediction why 20 parameters uh, which govern the whole universe. Like the mass, why spin, why the mass, it's such quantity, so we have 
the answer of all these questions. And by the way, they think the string theory says that this is the end of theoretical physics, but so I'm happy to receive another question. Uh, can you, uh, thank you for your presentation. Can you go to the brain slide? Uh, what is the uh, scale of this picture? We have a three dimension. Um, what do you mean by the scale, the scale of this one? I mean, we have a three dimension world. Why you picture it at in the two dimension? <laughs> no, it's look like uh, how I can show you three dimension. I don't understand exactly your question. So uh, I, don't know I, I am. What is no, it's not. There is no excess. I'm just, um, this is like um, a simulation or it's like an imaginary picture of how it's look like our uh, universe in the uh, string theory. So string theory, it's like the, uh, it predicts that our universe is like a membrane. Why membrane? Because the string, it's one dimensional extension but we don't interest just one dimensional. We interest about second also dimensional extension, which is the membrane. So uh, it predicts that there is our universe where all the forces are constrained or tangent, uh, tangential to this universe. And there is multi-universe and those are vibrating. At some points, they, I mean, close to each other and there is a collision. And that's why the Big Bang happened because in all the theories, we don't know how Big Bang, uh, I mean, happened. We know that there is a some points which are called Big Bang, uh, but we don't know why the Big Bang happened. What's the reason that Big Bang happened? In string theory, it's uh, these two membranes. And these two membranes has we don't know the dimension, so, um, but we know that the dimension of string theory is 11.